Julian Schnabel, bonsoir. You are bonsoir. becoming at 39 the new giant in American painting and the people compare you to Andy Warhol, no? I mean, I guess when you're a painter, they compare you to other painters, yeah, no? Yeah. I guess that's uh, one way people have of understanding things, you know? Yeah. They uh, attach something else to you so it's a handle that they could, that they can uh, digest. Yeah. So you were born in Brooklyn, and when you were young, your family went to Texas, mm -hmm. and there, because of loneliness maybe, you began to, to paint, no? Uh, I was always painting. Yeah? Yeah, I was lonely when I was little. <laughs> Before I moved to Texas. Yeah. No. Um, but I guess moving to Texas had a big effect on my work, in a way. Just sort of the displacement of being in a strange place. Is it in Texas that there was a guy living near you, and he was painting horses, and you were very impressed by him? Um, no, it's funny, you have a little story, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Now, when I was little, um, three years old, there was somebody drawing a horse in Florida. Yeah. So I tried to do it too, and yeah. I, I did it, and my mother thought it was very good, so that yeah. was sort of a Pavlovian beginning, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Your first exhibition was in um, Houston, and it wasn't that well received by the critics. Uh, it's a lot to expect for people to understand your paintings, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Then you decided to work as a cook, no? And, and to, to pay your trip to, to Europe? I was cooking in different restaurants as yeah. a job. Yeah. And um, I guess the first time I came to Paris was in 76. Mm -hmm. Not that long ago. No. But I liked it. I like Paris. Yeah. I like Paris. But explain us what happened to you in Barcelona when you were in, in his hotel and you discovered your craft. Uh, the story about Barcelona is a story, yeah. like any other story. Yeah. I mean... It's a legend, I should say. Uh, maybe, yeah. maybe yeah. not, but basically uh, I like the work of Gaudi a lot. The Parc Güell yeah. uh, was very beautiful. You, and you saw in the morning La Sagrada Familia? Yeah, I saw all of his, yeah. all of his, uh, his work in Barcelona, yeah. but yeah. I, I also saw a very crummy a mosaic on a wall in a very bad restaurant and I thought that the white plates were uh, um, they're reflective yeah. yeah then in his hotel in the afternoon when you came back you, you went to, to the place where was the, your wardrobe and you decided to, to to break plates and to stack them on, on wood no yeah uh, there was a closet that was a very beautiful uh, size yeah came out of the wall, it was a human size, so yeah. I I just thought that that was the first, um, that was the first armature for the first plate painting. And then in four years, you became one of the most expensive painters in the world, very, not, uh, not easily, but very quickly, no? I mean, I think there's a lot of paintings that are expensive, but that doesn't make them good necessarily. But, I, but people seem to say that around here. I guess they think that Americans have a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You said you are inspired by anything as long as it uh, excites your, your curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you digest everything and you put it back on your... Yeah, on so frame. I would yeah. say that Gaudi was no more important than coming here today, you know, or yeah. something that yeah. might have happened yeah. around the corner. Mm. And very often, you mix different styles in your painting, is to say, uh, abstraction and figuration too, mm -hmm. and that cancel the discussion yeah. about, about it, no? Yeah, I don't, I don't really make a differentiation between a painting that has figures in it or a painting yeah. that doesn't. Yeah. Um, what makes a painting modern is if it has some kind of um, usefulness to it towards the viewer mm -hmm. or towards the artist I mean I make them for myself mm -hmm. when people look at them uh, um, they either get something out of it or they don't mm -hmm. but um, but I think that I don't necessarily think that paintings that just have figures in them are modern or paintings that just have uh, rectangles painted on them are modern so and I, I made some paintings that had two panels on them where I would juxtapose an abstract image and a figurative one. 
but um, that was just a few paintings. What are the painters who inspired you the most? Picasso? Um, I like Picasso a lot. Yeah. I like the late paintings a lot yeah. too. Yeah. And Arto, you say that you, you like very much the Arto drawings, no? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think they're great. Yeah. I think they're... Uh, And Duchamp, you were inspired by Marcel Duchamp. There's a great piece that Joseph Boys did. It's framed and there's some chocolate on it and the words are written. The uh, silence of Marcel Duchamp is overrated. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think of French painters? Actual French painters, like Figuration Libre, Combas, Du Rosa. Uh, I'm not terribly interested in that painting. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the most interesting French painter I know is a woman named Anne Duong. Mm -hmm. And um, her paintings have the same feeling as Artaud drawings, you know. You come very often to Paris, no? I like it here a lot. You have a lot of friends here in Paris. Yeah, yeah. it's very nice to have some yeah. friends because yeah. I remember when I was here when I didn't know anybody and I had a hard time buying a steak frites at the Latin Cluny. And so it's nice when uh, you go and people uh, let you into a restaurant or uh, into a bar or... Uh, how did you discover Tati, the, the, the store Tati at Barbes? I was coming in from the airport one day and I, I was near Montmartre and I was looking in all of these, what did you call them in French? The store, the canopy in front of the yeah, yeah. were pink and white and uh, they looked like paintings to me. And so... Uh, you decided to paint on them? Yeah, I went into the store and asked if I could buy them and they thought I was crazy, so... I asked a French friend and they didn't give them to him either. Yes, Henri Putman, that's it. Well, well first yeah. I asked a guy named Marc-François Aubois. Yeah. He used to work with Caroline Loeb. Yeah. And, uh, They didn't give them to him, so I <laughs> called Andre Putman, and uh, she knew the people, or they knew who she was, so she got this material from me. And uh, I made 11 paintings. Yeah. I called them the Tati paintings. Yeah. And uh, Les Bapri, Tati, eh? the, the well, line is Les Bapri, well, the, and your, your paintings are very expensive. But the, 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 yeah. but the, 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 it's the cheapest price you'll get them for. <laughs> <laughs> We can see them at uh, Yvon Lambert until the mid-May. And uh, how much is one? Um, well, I don't know really. I, I don't know if there are any left for sale, but yeah. uh, there was a big painting that I guess would be about $300,000, and the smaller ones, I don't know, um, medium-sized ones were $175,000, and the small one was, well, small one is still six feet tall, yeah. but that was like a, $120,000. So they're not very expensive. Didn't you want to expose them at Tati's? Just for a night? Um, I think the space in Yvonne's is yeah. clearer. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there are too many clothes yeah. in Tati. Yeah. But, uh, but when I drive around and I see all of the Tati stars, I feel like it's an advertisement for the show. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you be? Would you like to be? If you were not uh, Julian Schnabel, what painter, what character? Uh, what painter would I like? I, I wouldn't like to be anybody else. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind being Gerard Depardieu for a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think he's real, pretty great, uh, particularly in uh, Novecento. Yeah. You know, this uh, Bertolucci film, I thought he was really great. But I think he's a... a a French um, natural resource. Yeah. I think he's great. And if you had to give a definition of you, what would you say? Just a line, just a sentence. On your grave. Uh, in the dictionary, if you want. Uh, towards the end, I was, uh, I was just getting started. And to be sure to not rien rater the Inalarditube, abonnez-vous and mettez un pouce bleu.